So I've got a relatively, probably an unusual um, YouTube channel. When you look at our statistics, over half of our uh, viewer population is over age 40, and over 25% is over age 65. Why is that important for what's going on in this video? This video is about a couple of topics, sarcopenia or muscle loss and frailty. Now these are very much, uh, as you'll see in a few minutes, they're, the overlap is huge. Uh, on a practical basis, they're probably, they're mostly the same issue for, uh, for the elderly population. It really begins to take, uh, take its toll in the mid 60s and beyond. Um, <clears throat> this is sarcopenia or muscle loss. Age 25, age 63, about the same thigh size or leg size. But with the 25-year-old, much more of this is muscle. And with the 63-year-old, much more of this is fat. Um, <clears throat> there's another way of seeing it. It's very visible. Uh, now, sometimes it's not so visible. But again, if you're... Uh, <clears throat> If someone's large and they don't have a lot of this visible muscle cut uh, in their mid-60s and beyond, you need to start thinking about the inside of them looking like this. Why is that a big deal? Well, again, we'll talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so, just every time you see sarcopenia, just think uh, muscle loss. Aging well. It's been declared a global, a global health uh, priority by the World Health Organization, and the roles of uh, muscle loss and frailty in late life is receiving increasing attention. The by far the biggest growing demographic in, around the world is the 65 and above. We are aging. We're starting to conquer. We're starting to have some success in terms of knocking out the things that kill us younger. Even in, in terms of uh, heart attack, stroke, uh, some of these other disablers. We're getting older as a population due to that success. As we do, frailty and uh, muscle loss are, again, bigger and bigger deals, and they're growing each year. Now, what is the, what's the difference between frailty and muscle loss? Frailty is the decline. It's more of a conceptual issue. It's the decline of an individual's homeostatic function, strength, and physiologic reserves. It leads to an increase in vulnerability. While sarcopenia or muscle loss describes the loss of muscle mass and function with age. As you can see, you start thinking about those two definitions. Frailty is a little bit more functional in or orientation. Sarcopenia or muscle loss is, uh, again, right in front of you. Very easy to see, objective. Uh, conceptual definitions uh, have been widely agreed on, uh, but there's lack of consensus on how to measure them. We review, uh, in, in this article, they review different operational definitions, uh, review the science, the literature, and, um, <clears throat> and the evidence that no matter what definition you use, the prevalence and clinical impact of these conditions is high and growing. Um, they also talk about the commonality of low physical function to uh, both conditions, uh, both frailty and uh, loss of muscle mass. <clears throat> it's a feature which can use a, it, it can be very pragmatic. Again, you can, you can start digging down on a couple of things. Okay, look at the muscle mass. If you've got the resources to do an MRI, you can look at uh, MRI. And here's another one. Usual walking speed is a simple, uh, easy to measure, very feasible, and it's been extensively validated against health, health outcomes. That's just use of walking speed. Also, uh, sit and stand when uh, the, somebody's ability to get up out of a chair and walk. Um, <clears throat> that's for people at the lower end of, um, of uh, functionability. And again, as we've talked about, we've got viewers on every end of the, on both ends of that spectrum. Um, for example, uh, John uh, Lorscheider is doing uh, fairly competitive uh, cycling. I do um, intervals on the treadmill at uh, one to one and a half um, percent incline and uh, five-minute mile pace. So again, we've got 
a lot of different variations, but the point here is not to talk about the the different ends of the spectrum. The point is to talk about the importance of muscle mass and muscle function in terms of aging. Now, <clears throat> we've talked about uh, reasons. Why is, why is muscle mass important? Why is function important? Um, they bring up a big issue here, surgery. You know, surgery is basically just another stressor to the body. But, as you see here, <clears throat> frailty appears to outperform traditional anesthetic and surgical risk scores in terms of its association with post-operative complications, length of hospital stay, institutionalization, and mortality. Let me put that in simple English. People with uh, frailty that uh, go into their 60s and 70s and lead a sedentary life are far more likely to end up institutionalized or dead after stressors like surgery. We've talked about other reasons too. Um, <clears throat> let me see. We've talked about falls and we talked about, you know what, this gentleman may not have muscle uh, loss. Well, maybe he does. Maybe he's like that first MRI where he appears to be uh, nutritionally okay, but look, significant loss of muscle and just uh, body fat in there increasing his, his uh, BMI. We've also talked about some other uh, uh, issues as well. We, we covered a, a video where we talked about <clears throat> cardiovisc uh, cardiovascular risk uh, and cardiovascular inflammation, the risk factors for that, increase the loss of muscle mass. So again, if you're set up for hypertension, diabetes, these two especially greatly increase your loss of muscle mass as you get older. The, um, it's not clear why, but um, there's thoughts about, you know what, those same things that, uh, that same cardiovascular inflammation that decreases your, or that that causes endothelial damage may also decrease your um, blood supply to muscle tissue. So <clears throat> we've covered uh, several issues around sarcopenia or muscle loss. I've done several videos on it. This one has to do with the best way to maintain mitochondrial mass, um, and that is high intensity intervals. And why is mitochondrial mass a big deal for, um, for this issue? Mitochondria are, do appear to be, well, they're central to the uh, process of aging. And mitochondria are, um, this is where our vast majority of mitochondria are located, in our large skeletal muscles. So again, start thinking about... Um, what you're doing to maintain your muscle mass because if you want to age well, if you want to avoid disability, and if you want to live a long time, you're going to need the muscle to do it. Thank you.